All right, if we look at our Volkswagen in the back, our 1964 Beetle, um, we're back on it. And you can see that I have stripped the roof down to bare metal. Now, we're going to end up painting all the green on this car because that was a custom mixed green that I mixed up. And it's going to be highly impossible to actually mix the paint to match. So we will be painting all the green on the vehicle. But if you've been following this little video set, then you know that I went ahead and popped the roof out on this. It was extremely crushed in. And now what we're going to do, we are going to final finesse, we're going to work on all of the imperfections that we still have left in the roof of Maxwell, the 1964 bug. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie, the body shop girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. you're happy all right so the first thing we're going to do to find all our highs and lows if you look right here I got a bunch of different markers but what makes these markers unique is that they're very big in size and what we're going to do is we're going to take a black one and we are going to we're going to go ahead and concentrate on this area right here now in the camera you can't see it too good but when I do this you should be able to see it and what we're going to do is we're going to use our uh, magic marker or sharpie king size as a guide coat okay so I'm gonna go ahead and basically do you see what I'm doing here yeah all right so I'm gonna basically do this and this is probably the worst area of the whole car now what we did is we went ahead and used our port of power to pop it all out and I haven't done any hammer and dolling yet because I wanted to save that um, for this little area right here and if you look what I'm doing here all right in this area right here see where it's caved in still and you can see where it's pushing the roof uh, uh -huh, yep, yep, yep. okay well this is in perfect condition right here this is pushed down which is making this soft so what we got to do is we got to pull this out so I'm going to take my magic marker and once again I'm going to go ahead and mark all this up and I will be honest with you I will be using Bondo on this car I am not a metal uh, perfectionist guru guy but I do know how to pull dents out of stuff where you use minimal and that's our goal here is to use minimal Bondo and what I'm going to show you is how to pull these dents out without stretching this roof because this is really a, this is a crucial repair uh, we don't want to ruin this roof when you saw me use the port of power you saw that I was going really really slow and I was taking my time and I stopped when I had to and this is why all right so now what we got we got our area covered with our guide coat and then what we're going to do next, we're going to go ahead and get a block, a hand block sander with some 80 grit on it, and then we will sand this down. 
Okay, what I got here, I got a long block. Now this is a flex block. We're working on a round surface here. And what I'm going to do, I got 80 grit, and then what I'll do is I'll take my block and I'm going to sand it down. You can see where all the high spots are because those are shiny. Anything that you see where the, uh, the dye is still left, look at this one right here. That's a low spot. Let me go ahead and... Now, many was asking, why don't I use spray paint on it? I'm going to tell you why I don't use spray paint. The reason I don't use spray paint is because if I spray painted that, and the tools that I am going to use on it would literally create a fire, or should we say it will melt onto the, pl the metal. So what we need to do, because we're going to be heating this up to work it. Do you see what I'm saying? Yep. So by using this real thin die, or should I say marker, that won't happen. All right, so if we take our towel and wipe that off, you can basically see where our high spots are and our low spots. The high spots will be the very shiny. That's a high spot right here. There's a high spot. And our low spots are in here, see? All right, so we got a low spot here. Do you see those low spots? Yeah. Here's a low spot right here. Right. Now what this is, this is a metal file. It's an adjustable metal file. It contours to what you're working on. And I'm going to show you right here. So we're going to take that, and as I tighten it one way, or should I say loosen it up, well, we're going to tighten it. Can you see it moving? Yeah, I saw that. Now it's got a bow in it. Now, what we have done, and we got too much, let's go ahead and back it off. What we're doing is we are fitting our file. Do you see what's going on here? Yeah. We're fitting our file to the car that we're working on. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Now, I'm going to take my file. Okay. And now, another thing that it did, that just gave me another guide coat to show me the high spots that I need to get rid of. So we got some other tools over here. Come on over here. Very simple, very easy. I got two different style body hammers, basically the same. One's curved and one's straight. The other situation is, this is called a waffle face. This is a shrinking hammer, whereas that's called a smooth face. Do you see the difference? Yeah. Another thing I got here, I got a slap hammer. This is just your typical slap hammer that you can purchase at... Uh, I guess any automo automotive, uh, you know, supplier that sells them. And then I got two different dollies. I got a curved dolly that has kind of semi the same curve as what we're working on. And then I also got two flat edges. And then I also got this dolly, which is the one I use the most of. And it's a curved handle and also flat edges and corners that we can use. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take our shrinking hammer and then we're going to go ahead and take our dolly and we're going to go ahead and start hammering some of these high spots now. Now, did you see what happened? There's a high spot right here and by hitting that high spot, it stretched this back out. So I got my dolly underneath and then I'm using my shrinking hammer and all I'm concentrating on here is I'm concentrating on all the high spots that were bare metal okay that's it here's another high spot right in this area right here I'm gonna go ahead and continue to keep using my dolly but what I'm doing here is I'm using the flat side not the curved side and the reason for that is because we're hitting it in small sections. We're not using a big curved area. And if I run my hand across that, it feels like it has brought the high spot down, but you can see 
Now, this used to be caved in, but look what's happened here. You see what I'm saying? It's popping out. Now, here's a section right here I want me to focus on. If we put this straight edge on here, look at the... Do you see that? You can see that that's really low right there. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then see right here the same way if you can shine the camera in there, you can see the light. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, we got two situations. If many can bring the camera around underneath here, you'll see that we got this section here, which is inside, and we can't get inside here to use our dolly. So what we got to do on that one, we got to be very, very careful. And what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use this curved hammer and I'm going to hit that. And when I strike it, I'm going to drag it across the metal. And by dragging that on there, that's going to stretch that metal back out. So if you can go ahead and keep the camera on this dent right here, we're going to go ahead and take our hammer and we're going to lightly get it. Now, we're just prepping this up just to flatten this out. Okay, we still got a lot of work to do. So I feel the dent, and I'm looking at it with my hammer. It seems like it's right in the way of this. And it should be coming out. Can you see that, Manny? So what I'm doing is I'm not hitting straight on, I'm dragging it across. And I'm using force to do that, which is pushing the metal up. So remember, this whole area was caved in. Like a little valley. Right. So what we'll do is we'll take our sandpaper with our block, and this is going to tell us, this is going to help us with our road map. And you can see look what's going on. See what's going on here? Just from using our hammer and our dolly. It's changing. It's changing. Look how small that is right there. So we're going to still concentrate on this area right here, all right? We're still going to concentrate on that because I want to pop that out. And the way that I'm going to do that, I'm going to take a damp sponge. And then what I'll do now is I am going to use my acetylene torch. A lot of people rely to use propane torch. And the difference you have between propane and this, this is a very, very fine heating source. And you can manipulate your way in a small area very, very fast. Whereas if you use a propane torch, it heats up a big area. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And it takes a lot longer. So we're gonna go ahead and see if we can get this set. And you see what I got right there? It's barely enough. I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start on this edge right here because this is where our high spot is. And I'm just gonna heat it up. You see that? Now we're going to pull it down, and that should pull that low spot out. So we're going to keep moving on it. I'm going to hit it right here. You saw it shrink down. Now watch. It should come right back out. Let's go ahead and get this one out. Now remember this is tin cans right there. Remember that? Yeah. We're going to go ahead. Here's a very low spot. And then we're going to... Should pull it right out. so we don't have to use a lot of heat. Um, you saw me heat this area up right here. And then what I did is I took my hammer and I hit it on, but look how, see how that's starting to stretch that? Getting it back in shape. Yeah, it doesn't look It's really tight. Do you see what I'm saying? It doesn't look as flimsy. 
flimsy as it was. Right. Let's go ahead and sand that and see what it looks like. So by just taking my dolly and gently tapping on it. Look at that. This is almost completely gone. And that one there was pretty deep. You know what I'm saying? It was. But by gently tapping that, look what's happened here. I'm removing that big dent. And another thing is, look what's going on here. From tapping that, it's tightened all this up. What I'm doing is I'm getting the bodywork to my liking so I can do what I need to do to restore it where it isn't a Bondo buggy. Does that even make sense? Yeah. So let me take this dolly again and I'm going to go ahead and tap it by hand where the low spots are. And once again, I'm just barely tapping. I'm not hitting it hard. I mean, if you were looking where I am, this is popping out just by doing this. And I'm going to show you that. Right here, this one here is kind of... But look how solid that is now. Just by hitting it with the... And then we'll go ahead and take our sander and look at it disappear. See? Look at that. You can see it go away. Look at that. Huh? See there? See, there's still a low spot right here. Let's see what we got now. See there? Look at that. It's looking pretty good. And we're going to go ahead and... There's a high spot right here. Um, what I got is my sponge. And... I'm going to show you a tool that I use to get these high spots out. Now, I'm using my hand and I can feel that it's high right here. Alright. I can also feel a little, it's low right here and it really feels good right in here. But we got this one high spot here that I want to get out and the tool that I'm going to use is called a shrinking disc. Now this is a stainless steel disc that you put on your grinder and then what that does is when you hit that high spot that will heat that high spot up and then you take your sponge and you very lightly or if you have a rag cool it down and it should shrink it down so let's go ahead and try this. take my sponge and I'm going to cool that down and I can feel the heat. See look what happened by shrinking that down. By using the shrinking disc and shrinking that it has stretched this metal back to where it's supposed to be. See? Um, I know this is a little boring but this is uh, a lesson that I've really got to learn here. Look how much we have taken out of that just from what we're doing. Many. Yeah. Now do you see why you use dye on it instead of paint? I see. Right. Okay, look at that. I can't believe it. That's really came out nice. Um, what I gotta do, I gotta 
keep using the combination of tools that I got. And that consists of what I just showed you. Um, the shrinking disc. Here's a spot right here, but then on the other hand, see we got a low spot here. So I got to get in there and I got to fine tune it and I got to make it work properly. I'm going to repeat my process throughout the whole roof. Um, I think it's coming out great. I like it. It's a time consuming job to do metal work. Uh, this is a very good tool to have right here if you own one. Okay. Believe it or not, that's really helping it by using the metal file. And I mean, even up here, here's a dent right here. But I mean, it, it's just really amazing that the damage this roof was that I am fixing it, most people would have said no. I got about 14 hours in it now just straightening it out. 16 hours. And uh, I think we're ready to go ahead and put body filler on it. Um, I'm just, uh, this was our worst dent in the center here. I don't know what the deal was. But these two right here were the worst ones we had. They were right in the middle. And then we had one over here. And that one over there was pretty serious to sell. But I think we're ready to clean all this dye off of here. And, uh, like it's a little high right in this area here. Let me look at that and see. Um, what I'm doing now, I'm using my shrinking hammer and my dolly, and I'm pulling it toward me when I hit. And what that's doing, that's shrinking the metal and stretching this out. This is a big oil can, tin can situation we had going on here. There. Right here it looks like a high, it even feels like a high spot. I'm going to go ahead and use my um, shrinking disc. There's a high spot right here. Let me get that shrinking disc and uh, I'm going to use that to heat this up. And what it'll do, it'll raise it up from the heat, and then when I take my cool, it'll shrink it back down. Done, it's shrunk. I can see where it's already shrunken it down, and I can feel it too. Oh, yeah, look at that. Remember, it was high. Now, look at it, it's pretty much almost flat. See what I'm saying? Did you see it? I, I was thinking uh, it's kind of hard to see, but yeah, look at it now. It's flat when I sand it with the sandpaper. See, it's barely the sandpaper is barely touching it. I gotta get this drip rail. Back in shape. And uh, here's a. So, there you go. We have now straightened the roof on this and got it done enough to where we can actually do body work on it. Now, when I do the body work on this, it's going to tell me if I got highs and lows in it. And the only way, once I do the body work, there's some highs and lows in it. The only way to get those out is we'll have to use our um, pick end of our body hammer with our dolly and pick them out. Or another good thing we can do once we put our uh, 
start doing our body work with our filler or bondo, whatever you want to call it. We can also take our file, and this is a metal file, and wherever we have high spots in our bondo, we can file that metal down and it'll shave it down to level it all out. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. Okay, what I'm doing, um, we went ahead and pulled the roof out. We did all our metal work that we could possibly do to it. And now what I'm doing is I'm skimming the top to get all the ripples and imperfections out of it. Let's take a look at it and see what we got. Thanks for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.